This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. It's your weekly blitz with Chris, keeping you in the game. Hey, good morning, everybody. I hope you've gotten your workout in already this morning and or you're working out now and plan on having a great day. I know I am. Coach Chris Cotton here from Autofix Auto Shop Coaching, where we work hard to support your financial success. As you get into today's episode, you may know someone in your network who can benefit from today's topic. So please take time to share personally or through your social network. If you have an idea for a show topic or just want to talk shop, feel free to get with me at chris at autofixsos.com. Before we get started, though, with episode 53, Time Blocking, I'd like to take a quick second to give a shout out and thank our sponsor, Autoly. Your auto repair business may not be as successful as you want, and a common reason why is because you don't have the right systems in place. This is why I need to tell you about Autoly. Autoly is a game-changing, easy-to-use, all-in-one shop management software. Many Autoly customers have doubled revenue in their first 10 months and reduced admin work by 10-plus hours a week. Going from your current software to AutoLeap is like changing from a flip phone to a smartphone. Check them out at www.autoleap.com to see for yourself. We'll also put that link in the show notes. I'm going to talk about time blocking today. Time blocking is very important. People ask me all the time, Chris, how do you handle your workload? How do you handle what you do every day? It's because I have all my day planned and, and blocked out. For you personally, in the past week, you probably reprioritized your tasks, rescheduled your calendar, and maybe even worked late to get some things done, right? So unfortunately, you're not alone. According to the research that I did, 87% of workers are working two hours later every day compared to 2019. Also saying that, over one quarter of deadlines are missed each week. So every day we're jo- we juggle competing demands on our time and as a result, experience more chaos than clarity right? In a busy shop, things drag you away. So luckily there's a solution and it's called time blocking. This is a completely new terminology change for me. So I've always called this making appointments with myself, but the more research I've done, uh, time blocking is the correct verbiage for it. Previously, if you've heard me talking about making appointments with yourself, Time blocking is what I was talking about. I just didn't know it at the time. That was that was my terminology that I was using. With time blocking, you can gain control of your calendar in order to focus on what truly matters to you and your auto repair business. Time blocking can help you align your attention with your intentions. Okay, did you guys hear that right? Align your attention with your intentions. So you're always prioritizing the right work at the right time. Okay, so Chris, what is time blocking? Time blocking in and of itself is a time management strategy where you schedule out every part, and I mean every part of your day. With time blocking, you're you're effectively breaking the work week into bite-sized time slots where you check your email, work on projects, take a break, or even exercise. And so we're going to kind of talk about that here in a minute, but we have all that on our schedule. So like most time management strategies, time blocking is a way for you to reclaim your day and get a better sense of where your time is actually going. And by scheduling those blocks of work, you can not only ensure you're completing your important tasks, but also make sure you're setting aside time for rest and self-care. So what did I just say? I just said rest and self-care. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not putting the oxygen mask on yourself first before everybody else on the plane then you're not going to be there to save the plane, okay? If, if we get into how time blocking works, to create a time block, you want to group like tasks and schedule a block of time to work on those tasks. And so there's, there's a couple of fundamentals to time blocking. Um, one, you're visually scheduling time blocks on your calendar so your work can't be in, interrupted or scheduled over. And you're also grouping like tasks into one concentrated block of time. One of the things I do is, you know, I run a really tight schedule and every day or at the end of every day, I print out the next day's schedule and I put it on my door so Kimberly can see it. That way she knows what I'm doing if I'm in the podcast booth or if I'm talking to clients in case she needs me or whatever, she knows when my breaks are going to be. It's really important for your employees to have something like that as well and make sure that they know that there are certain times 
that you're not to be interrupted and hang it on the door. It's almost like a like that red flashing light on the outside of a studio that says, hey, we're filming in progress or whatever. Do not bother. I also color code my time blocks depending on, on if it's for a 20 group, if it's for exercise, if it's for breakfast. And yes, I add that in there. I have exercise and breakfast in there. And again, make sure your employees know that there are times when they can interrupt you and times where they can't interrupt you and stick to that. Okay. So I got to go back to how time blocking works. For example, you might start by creating a one hour time block at 9 a.m. to answer emails. And then, then after that, you'll create a time block from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. to work on your main project for the day, whatever that is. For example, you might be reviewing and finalizing your marketing calendar. And at 11.30 a.m., you create another one-hour time block for lunch and so on. For us in the repair industry, probably 30 minutes. Like, because <laughs> you know we got to eat in a hurry. The other thing I want to tell you to do is try this time blocking in the middle of the week first and then go out to Monday and Friday because Monday and Fridays are usually crazy busy and they need you unless they don't need you. So back to time blocking your calendar. You're not only setting aside chunks of time for critical work, like responding to emails or finishing tasks. You're also reducing um, what we would call context switching. So how often do you catch up on emails between tasks and try to tackle a larger product in between other work? Instead, time blocking allows you to set specific times for important tasks so you can effectively focus on your high impact work. So to put that in the shop context, if you have a technician that's switching from car to car or job to job every 30 minutes or an hour, that person's going to be less productive than if you gave them a four hour job and they're able to knock it out in three hours. So if that's important for our technicians and being productive, then why why would we do anything different for ourselves? So schedule it together. Out of the book that I got this from, this is a this is a sample of somebody's time blocking. It, it shows Monday uh, the tenth. Breakfast is from eight thirty to nine a.m. Focus time from nine to ten thirty a.m. Client calls from ten thirty to eleven thirty a.m. Lunch from eleven thirty to twelve thirty p.m. Focus time from twelve thirty to two thirty p.m. Quick sync at two thirty p.m. Feature presentation from 3 to 4 p.m., focus time 4 to 5 p.m., workout 5 to 6 p.m., and cook dinner 6 to 7 p.m. And if you were to look at mine, mine is very similar. Actually, I'll click over to mine and kind of read it out for you. I'm up and ready to go at 5 a.m. So 5 5 to 6 a.m., emails and reading. 6 to 7 a.m. is my morning workout. Breakfast is 7 to 8 a.m., uh, that's also making coffee for me, getting breakfast. And I make breakfast for Kimberly and coffee every morning, eight to 9 AM, uh, follow up from weekend. That's any emails, other emails that I would gotten or business related specific emails over the weekend, uh, work on podcast scripts from nine to 10 AM, 10 to 11 AM. I have uh, podcast recording 11 to 12 a.m. is the leadership weekly meeting with service up. One of the projects I'm working on uh, 12 to two is an open time where if you go on my web page and look for a time to schedule for me, if you have questions or anything, that's the time that I have available. Then I've got an afternoon workout from two to 3 p.m. I've got 30 minutes of unscheduled time at 3 p.m. to 3.30, and then 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. is finish off the day. And then, so, like, the emails and reading, that repeats every day. My morning workout and breakfast work is the same every day. And then the afternoon workout adjusts. But then, you know, on other days, I've got all my client calls and everything else. So that's just to give you an idea of what my day looks like. And so they're also color-coded. Like, all the personal, the emails and reading, breakfast and the workouts, they're all in blue. Anything to do with a customer or client is in green. And then uh, Zoom type meetings for service up are in red. And then I also have a yellow, which is any time that I have for me and Kimberly or, or personal time like that. So that's, that's how I do it. And that's how I stay on top of things. It's once you get started and get into it, it can be a great thing. And I highly recommend this for, for all my shop owners. Okay. There's also something called time boxing. And so you have time blocking versus time boxing. So time boxing is, 
is the same, but it works a little bit differently. So here's how they differ. So to create a time block, you'll assign a block of time to a set of tasks, like checking your email, speaking with customers, or writing. To create a time box, you'll assign each task an individual box with start and end times for each task. If you look at a time blocked calendar, you'd see large blocks of time dedicated to batch tasks. For example, you might have uh, a block from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. for marketing calendar review. A time box calendar, on the other hand, would have each task scheduled out in between that. So you might have a a task from 3 p.m. to 3.15 to review design feedback on Facebook banner image and another task from 3.15 to 3.30 to revise homepage image based on design feedback and so on. Time boxing is a little bit more detailed. And like just to begin with, let's, let's get you into the time blocking and then you can move into this. There's another one called task batching. Ta- task batching is an element of time blocking. And, and when you batch tasks, you collect and connect any similar tasks so you can work on all of them at once. These tasks all often take up way or much more time than we think. But because they're so quick to complete, we don't actually track how much time we're spending on them. Okay. So time blocking versus time tracking. Time tracking refers to the process of recording the time you spend on projects. So that would be for billing purposes. And if you want to move into something like that to gauge your productivity, just like we would gauge a technician's productivity, you could do that as well. Okay. So why should you try time blocking? Time blocking won't be effective if your calendar is mostly filled with meetings But if you frequently have chunks of open time on your calendar, you can use a strategy to better manage your attention and focus. So here I can equate Parkinson's law and take it from the auto shop profits and cash flow and put it in this situation. So as Parkinson's law states, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So time blocking is a great way to take back control of your calendar and intentionally schedule work. Time blocking is particularly useful if you frequently try to multitask, if you need help focusing on one task and reducing distractions, if you want to be intentional about your time and energy at work, if you need a clearer sense of where your time is going each day, and if you struggle with overworking. That's the one that gets us. We we overcommit and we overwork. Okay. So as you get started with time blocking, think of each block as an uninterrupted chunk of work where you can tackle critical projects, okay, and get into deep work. And I want to slow, I want to go back and talk about uninterrupted chunk of work. This is very important that if if you are easily distracted and in the beginning, turn your phone off. If you work with music, put music in the background. I always have my headset on because I'm listening to either music in the background, YouTube's playing. I have like, I go to YouTube and play like coffee coffee shop sounds because that helps me focus. I can block that out, still listen to it, but I can still get my other work done. Like if I'm heavy into my day reading financials or somebody's income statement, I crank some good music, um, some good 90s hip hop or whatever, and then just sink into it and then and then get those things knocked out. Again, make sure you're uninterrupted when you're, when you're fulfilling your time blocking. So I mentioned deep work um, just a minute ago. So the, the term deep work was coined by a guy called Cal Newport, and he's a big proponent of time blocking. You know, even Benjamin Franklin was an early adopter of time blocking, so it's been around a long time. But, but Newport was the first to connect time blocking uh, to work in the digital age. According to Newport, time blocking can help you schedule large blocks of distraction-free time where you can dive into deep interrupted work. And, and that's pretty much it, deep interrupted work. We talked about time blocking, what it is, what you should do. So now I'm going to give you seven tips to start time blocking your schedule today. So again, time blocking is a simple practice, but it can be you know tricky to implement and to stick to consistently. So with these seven tips, I hope you can take charge of your calendar, plus get some insight into the pitfalls you run into at each stage of the process. Okay. Number one, identify what you need to work on for the day. So like most time management strategies, the first step is to identify what you actually need to get done on a given day or week. If you don't already, practice keeping an update in a to-do list with all of your important work. Make sure you've got like a little notepad in your pocket. Send yourself texts, send yourself emails of things that need to get done. 
I also want you to keep in mind that you don't just need to know what to work on. You also need to know what to prioritize. So make sure you understand what your most important tasks are so you get them done on a daily basis. So ideally, look for a tool that allows you to add details and context to your work. So like the priority of a specific task, any important attachments or documents, collaborators, anything else need to be lined up. The potential pitfall with that, though, is even with time blocking, there might be days where you can't get all of, excuse me, where you can't get to all of your work. If you don't know what work to prioritize, you won't have a clear sense of which tasks you finish, need to finish every day and what you can defer until tomorrow. Number two, figure out or, or know when you're most productive. I'm most productive early in the morning. When you create your time block, you're scheduling a period of time to tackle work. Like, and if you've ever read the book, Eat, the, Eat That Frog, you want to you wanna eat those big frogs early in the morning so you can get on to the easy stuff and keep going. When you create a time block, you're scheduling a period of time to tackle work again, right? The hard work. So whether that's answering emails, attending meetings, having employee meetings, uh, checking off to-dos or something else, time blocks are helpful on their own, but you can increase the effectiveness of a time block by tailoring the work to your productivity preferences, okay? If you already don't know what time that is, think about when you feel most productive. Are you energized in the morning? Um, If so, you know, consider scheduling the work that requires the most energy um, before lunch. If you feel sleepy in the early afternoon, schedule smaller tasks like answering emails so you can maintain productivity. Uh, If you get a second wind in the late afternoon, save your important, important tasks for that period and make sure to minimize distractions that could interrupt your flow. Okay. And so the potential pitfall for that one is, is after you've been time blocking for a few days, evaluate how you're feeling at the end of the day. Are you feeling drained? Um, If you are, you may have misjudged when you're most productive during the day. Try to reschedule your work blocks to see if that helps, okay? Number three, group meetings if possible. Most of us have smaller shops and we're working on smaller levels, but meetings are another place you can put your preferred productivity times into practice. You may have meetings scattered throughout the day, which could be hampering your productivity, that's kind of like a, a Swiss cheese schedule where you have something and then you don't have anything and then you have something and then you don't have anything again. So scattered meetings can impede your productivity and make your daily schedule really hard to work around. So instead of having time for focus, work and free time, you're constantly being mentally interrupted by meetings. And, and so just like tasks, you can also time block meetings instead of scattering them out through the day. So the potential pitfall is that that one is is there will be instances when meetings are scheduled outside of your ideal meeting time. And that's OK. But try to block up into those if you can be a, be intentional about your time to succeed with time blocking. Try to be fl- flexible with your calendar and uh, and reschedule things if necessary. You know, don't be afraid to move those around. Um, number four, schedule your time blocks. Once you know when you're most productive and you've had a chance to time block your your schedule, um, it's time to schedule and set the rest of your time blocks. So think through those priorities you have for the day and schedule dedicated focus time for each batch of tasks in your calendar. If you want to come back to tasks more than once in a day, then that's fine. But schedule those two or three times out through the day. And the potential pitfall with this one is, you know, scheduling your time blocks so you can see them and hold yourself accountable to that commitment. But if all the time in your calendar is fully scheduled, it can be difficult for other people to schedule meetings with you or get a hold of you for important chats. Okay, it's it's really important that people understand and don't eat up your time. As an owner, you have a lot of things to do. You need to make sure those get completed. So number five, block off personal time. Time blocking isn't just a way to schedule your work tasks, right? Also schedule downtime every day. I talked about it earlier. This is where this part comes back in. For me, it's breakfast, workouts, things like that. So just like scheduling dedicated time for work, you create a time block for personal activities to help you stick to them. In addition to scheduling lunch, you can give yourself breaks for personal time, daily activities, or any other daily tasks you need to get done. Um, If you need to schedule picking up your kids from school or working out early in the afternoon, then do that. As I help move shop owners from working in their business to working on their business, one of the things I tell them to do is pick a day of the week and don't come in till noon. In that morning, spend time with your family. Take the kids to school. Have breakfast with the wife. Have breakfast with your husband. Have breakfast with the spouse. Spend some time together. Block that out. And then 
Hold yourself accountable to it. This is the other thing is you're going to look at your schedule and be like, ah, it's okay. I can do that later. The potential pitfall is not every personal time block needs a purpose, right? So consider leaving a personal time block open so you can decide on the spot if you want to take a walk. It doesn't just, if you want to do something in yellow and have it for 30 minutes, then you can walk, read, whatever. That's your time, okay? And and you can do whatever you want to with that. Number six, allow for unexpected interruptions or work. So time blocking fails when you don't have room to navigate any surprises in your day, like unexpected tasks that have to get done as soon as possible, last minute meetings that get scheduled during an important block of focus time. You know, you want to be able to engage with these, but you also don't want them to totally derail your day. If these situations frequently come up at work, I suggest dedicating an afternoon time block to flexible time. That way you already have a time block for any unexpected tasks. Or if something happens to interrupt one of your morning time blocks, you can move that interrupted work to your flexible afternoon block. Uh, One of the things that I love about my Google Calendar is if things are changing or if something unexpected happens, I can click and drag that box to another time and put it in there if I have the time available. One of the potential pitfalls for this one is is you need to make sure that any new task that crops up is higher priority than what you're currently working on. So oftentimes unexpected work feels urgent, but that doesn't mean it's more important than what you were w- initially working on. Always remember what your work priorities are, then rearrange your schedule accordingly. Next one is plan for lost time. Even the most effective time blocker will lose time during the day. Inevitably, um, you'll need to check a Slack message or email that seems high priority. You might get a phone call you have to answer. If you're working from home, you'll definitely get distracted by by other um, things around you. If it's it could be a roommate, child, pet, um, spouse, whatever. It's natural and it's okay, right? So consider dedicating certain time blocks for focus work and others for deep work. Um, when you're checking your email and going through your daily tasks, you can be interrupted without the distraction setting you back. But if you schedule a time block for deep work, consider snoozing all notifications on your computer desktop and put out a do not disturb mode, do not disturb vibe, do not disturb sign. If you have to put a do not disturb sign on your office door to make sure nobody bothers you, then do that. Make sure everybody around you knows what you're doing or at least that it's important deep work. Pitfall of this one, it might take a while to figure out the best strategy to help you minimize distractions. Keep adjusting and readjusting your time blocks as necessary, okay? Over time, you might find that you lose less time with the time management technique. Number eight, adjust as needed. So like all time management strategies, you should tweak and adjust your time blocks until they feel right for you. Um, You won't have a perfect day the first time you try time blocking. You're going to get interrupted. Give it time and do what feels right. So remember, the strategy is only effective if it meets your goals and needs. So I want you to optimize it for what works and discard anything else that doesn't help you feel more productive. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to listen. If you haven't found us on Apple Podcasts and or Spotify and followed us for free, then why not? Also, make sure to go and check out some of the other great podcast episodes on the Aftermarket Radio Network. I'm sure there's someone you care about who can benefit from the talk we had here today please feel free to share or forward this episode on to them, okay? This has been Coach Chris Cotton from Autofix Auto Shop Coaching. If you find yourself struggling in your auto repair business or have a feeling like you don't know what you don't know, but you're eager to learn and grow your business, then feel, please feel free to reach out to me, chris at autofixsos.com or call me at 940-400-1008. Time to get out and rise and grind, everybody. Make the appointment with yourself and keep it, Okay. You've been listening to the Weekly Blitz with Coach Chris Cotton on the aftermarketradionetwork.com. Follow Chris on your favorite podcast listening app. Let him know what you'd like him to cover. His email is in the show notes. Chris is all for advancing the aftermarket.